In today's video, I show you how to install and configure Calibre. What is Calibre? Calibre is a powerful and easy to use ebook manager. Users say it's outstanding and a must have. It'll allow you to do nearly everything and it takes things a step beyond normal ebook software. It's also completely free and open source and great for both casual users and computer experts alike. Let's get Calibre set up. But before we get started, if you haven't signed up for my newsletter yet, I'll leave a link below. It's a monthly publication with Unraid news, written out guides, and more. Sign up now so you don't miss out. On to Calibre. We will need a location for Calibre to store its books and its database. We'll need to create a Calibre subfolder in our data share. I'll place mine under Data, Media, and I'll create a new subfolder here named Calibre. New folder. Now that that's done, let's go back to our Unraid server. We're going to go to Apps. And in the search box, we're going to search for Calibre. We'll be setting up the normal Calibre server here, the one from the Linux server's repository. So find that in your list and click Install. It's giving me an alert here saying that some of the ports are already in use. So we'll check that out in a moment. Go ahead and hit OK if that comes up for you. Next, it wants to know what branch you want to install. I'm going to do the default branch. So go ahead and click on Default. For network type, we're going to change this bridge to our custom alien proxy network. It's a couple of different reasons why we do this. Personally, I like to keep all my R's and all my download clients and everything all in one group, one network, so that they're just communicating amongst themselves. It keeps it from going out to the router and kind of bouncing around your normal network. Another nice thing about using a custom network is that it allows you to use the container name versus the server IP address all the time. I don't always do that. Sometimes I do, but it's nice to have the option. And since this has the ability to communicate with Radar, I'm going to go ahead and put it on my custom alien proxy network. Next, we're going to scroll all the way down and expand show Docker allocations. We know that we've got some conflicts, so let's go back up to our port, web port UI here, which is 8080. I'm going to double click on that, hit Control F. Shows three in use. There's two there. Scroll down here, and sure enough, the Qubit Torrent VPN is being used by the same port. So we're going to change that. I'm going to go and adjust mine by one. So I'll make it 8081. Double click it, do another Control F for a search. It's found four, so one, two, three, and obviously that's not going to work because it's already used there. So let's change this to 82, and it shows one, so we'll be good with that port. Scrolling down, 8181, same thing, Control F, found three, which are right there, nothing down below, so that one's okay. 8081, let's search for that, three, three. It's so only had to adjust one port. Next option down here is password, and this is an optional password. If you set a password here, then it's going to require that to log into it. Since this is just accessible in my internal network, I'm not going to bother with that. But if you want, go ahead and put in a password. And if you do, the default user is going to be ABC, all lowercase. But as I said, I'm going to leave it blank. We are done with our Docker allocation, so let's go ahead and hide that. And then the next thing we want to do is we're going to have to add another path, port, variable, label, or device. So go ahead and click on that at the bottom. We're going to choose path, and I'm going to name it caliber library in the container path i'm going to do slash data in the host path we are going to browse to our data location we're going to leave it there because we want to have access to our other ebook folder and then the access mode we want that to be read and write everything else is good so go ahead and hit add and scroll down and hit apply and while it's installing i want to say thank you and i truly appreciate all the comments and the support that you've been giving me i make these videos to help you get your server up and running if you haven't subscribed yet, and I've given you some value, please consider subscribing. Also, while this is going, I'll tell you a little bit of a personal story about me. So I do Taekwondo, and a couple weeks ago I was in our sparring class, and did a jumping number three round kick, which the kick was awesome, I just didn't land it right. So I landed, my knee kind of bent, you know, and, and, eh, eh. no, it went this way. Not great. So I got back up, and my knee popped back into place, so obviously knocked it out of joint. Next day, it was swollen up pretty good. Made a doctor's appointment. Went there a few days later. According to him, he thinks it's just sprained. Didn't really hurt too bad. It was just so swollen I can't really move it. But it's definitely gotten a lot better in the last couple of weeks. So I don't know if you noticed in one video, I had this nice chair set next to me here. I had my leg up on it because I had to keep it kind of straight. But that's what I've been up to. Kind of nursing my knee back to health. And I can actually walk up and down stairs now. So that's it's an improvement. All right, that's done. Let's go ahead and hit done. So yeah, not a fun thing. Don't, don't do that doesn't feel good. Next, let's jump over to our Docker tab and turn on the auto start. So we'll find Calibre in the list here, go over to the right and turn on auto start. Now we'll go over to the Calibre icon and click web UI. And like I said, if you'd set a password, the default user here at this point would be ABC and then the password that you had selected. Let's get Calibre set up. 
the first thing it's going to want is a location to put the ebooks in. The default location here, the slash config slash caliber library, is actually within the app data folder, and we don't want it filling that up, so let's go ahead and change that. So we're going to click change over on the right, go up to computer, and you'll have a little icon of a drive here. Double click on that. Next, we'll drop down to data, media, and then the caliber folder that we had created earlier. We're going to select that. Go ahead and hit choose. Now it shows the data location is backslash data slash media slash caliber, which is in your data share, so that's where you want it. Go ahead and hit next. And the next screen that comes up, it's going to want you to choose your ebook device that you have. I use the Kindle Paperwhite and love it. The built-in backlight and e-ink screen makes it easy on my eyes and allows me to read it anytime, day or night. My wife has a Kindle Scribe, and she loves that she can now take notes right in the book as she's reading it. I'll leave links to these in the description if you want to check them out. So that is an Amazon product. I'll select that and then Paperwhite. And there's the Scribe option there if you do have one of those. You can select whatever device you have. If you have a Kobo or maybe a Barnes & Noble Nook or something of that nature, you can just select whatever company it is and then obviously the device. Pretty self-explanatory. Then you hit Next. And if you have a Kindle, then you can put in your Kindle email address here. So I don't have one set up for this. But we'll just say I have alientech at kindle.com. And then the email itself is your personal email that we will go with alientech42 at gmail. Then you hit next. Putting in your email addresses here allows you to send books directly to your Kindle. It's kind of a nice feature. So go ahead and hit next. Then it says, congratulations, you're all done. Go ahead and hit finish now. And it's starting up. And there you have it. Massive ebook collection right there. One quick start guide and that's it. Calibre is pretty powerful. So let me show you some of the features. First things first, let's go to this first tab up here, add books. Now we're going to browse for our ebook location. So I'm going to go with double click on computer. Once again, the drive, data, and then you're going to choose wherever your ebooks are stored at. So mine's under media and then ebooks. And this will actually, when we do this, it's actually going to make a copy of this book inside the Calibre library. So if you import all your ebooks into Calibre, then you can just get rid of the ebooks folder. So I'm going to go into ebooks, I'm going to find a book. We're going to go with the first one, Arthur C. Clarke. Let's go with 3001, The Final Odyssey. Then you can hit open. Select the book and hit open. There we go. It's going to read the metadata. It'll take a moment, but then it'll show up in your library here. So now we've got the quick start guide and 3001. So you can also add complete folders at a time. So if you hit the little drop down next to add books, we'll go down to add folders and subfolders. And it says, assume all books in a single folder are multiple formats of the same book. We can go yes. Browse back to our ebook location, and we'll hit choose. And it's telling you this book's already in there. We can choose to add it anyhow, or just get rid of it. So we'll just unselect that because we don't need it. And we're gonna hit okay. And now you see it's added all the books from Arthur C. Clarke that we had in our library. If we look through this list here, you can see this book here has got a nice cover art. It's got a nice summary of the book. Rama 2, same thing. 2061 does not, it's just got the cover art. So we can actually add the metadata and the cover art all at once. A couple ways of doing that, we can right click on it and do edit metadata and then drop down to download metadata and covers, or we can just hit control D. Now it's asking if you want it to just do metadata or just covers or both. I already have the cover, so I'm just gonna do download only metadata. In the bottom corner here, it says jobs and it's processing. It's going out, it's looking for the information. And now it's done, it's popped up. So let's go ahead and hit yes. And it went ahead and just dumped everything in there for us. You can also do it individually and check out each item. Once again, we'll do right click. We'll go down to edit metadata, download metadata. We just need the metadata for it. Get that processing another job. This time let's review the downloaded metadata. Everything on the left here, it shows what it's downloaded for it. Everything on the right is what was already in there. First thing on the title here, on the right, what we currently have is collected stories of Arthur C. Clarke, but what it's downloaded is the collected stories of Arthur C. Clarke. It's downloaded the author's name in proper order versus what we already had was backwards. It's added in tags. There's no ratings on it, so that didn't change. The Orion has been, you know, lowercase. Didn't know the date, but it's got the publishing date now. And then the description of the, the book itself. You notice there that there's no cover here because we told it not to get a cover for it. But anything that's on the right that is not on the left side that is downloaded, it will assume is correct and just move that over. So it's going to just automatically move in the cover for it. The English here is going to be the same thing. If you decide that, no, I don't like this Google identifier and you just want to use the actual ISBN number that you had, you can just hit the little arrow 
and it'll swap that over for you. And you can do that in any of these fields here. Once you're happy with your selections, go ahead and hit OK. You can also do a selection of them at a time. So you can select you know, all of them if you wanted. Edit metadata, download metadata and covers. And it's saying, you know, for all six books, do you want to do this? This time we'll do download both. Jobs running in the background. Now we can review each book individually. So I'll select review downloaded metadata. And here's the first book. So I definitely don't like that cover. So we'll take ours instead. Description's good. Everything else looks good, right? The rating's been updated. So instead of not rated, it's actually got a rating on it. Author's correct, title is correct. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And we can go through each book individually. This all looks good. Sure, next, 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 and done. Then just went through and updated all of them at once. You can also just select a book and then edit the metadata yourself. Click on edit metadata up there. Then you can go through and change whatever you'd like. Cancel out of there. You can convert books with Calibre, which is kind of nice, especially if you uh, have a certain format that you know your e-reader uses that you got a book and it's not in that format, you can change that. So when you select a book over on the right hand side, underneath the art for it, you'll see formats and it shows you the, right now this one is an EPUB. We can change this to another type if we'd like. So we can right click on it. We can do convert book, or we can just make sure the book's selected, go up to convert books up on the main menu bar. You can change metadata at this point. You can change the look and feel of it. There's all kinds of stuff, but what we're concerned about is in the top right, output format. We can change this to Mobi or AZW3 format. We can change it to PDF. There's all kinds of stuff, text. We'll just change it to Mobi because it's another pretty popular format. Then we'll hit OK and it processes the job. And if we look here under formats, it will pop up with both of them. So it's got both formats in there now. It doesn't overwrite what's already there. It just adds another one. Yep, there it is. So EPUB and Mobi. You can view the book so you can actually read it. Just kind of view icon. Give it a moment to load up. Give you a little description of how to how to use it, pressing the key to continue. Then you can do page up, page down, goes forward and backward, escape, gets you back to the menu, and then you can just quit. You have the option to get books. You can you know, love the books, fetch news. This is kind of neat too. You click fetch news, it's going to go out and show you all the different you know news and magazines that you can get. So I'm in the United States here. Let's go and look at that. We can get Barron's Magazine, Bloomberg's, Harper Magazine, New York Times, Wall Street Journal. All kinds of stuff. You just click on it. You can choose how often you want to get it. You can schedule it. And then you can have them automatically delete them after a certain amount of days. I don't need those, so I'm just going to cancel out of that. Kind of nice feature, though. Preferences allows you to obviously adjust the preferences. Remove books. Let's say you read this book. It was terrible. You're never going to read it again. You can just go hit remove and it gets rid of it for you. This next icon here, stack of books. It says Caliber. That's the library that we had set up. So you can create multiple libraries for different users. On my main server, I've got one for me, my wife, my son, my mother, and uh, my wife's aunt. So if you want to create another user, we're going to hit this little drop down next to the book stack icon, and we're going to do switch slash create library. New location, we're going to browse. Once again, computer, we're going to go back to our caliber location. So data, media, caliber. And it's going to want you to create a new folder because you can't have it in a location that's already got a library. So we're going to do right click new folder. And I'm going to name this Jeff and I'll choose that one or double click on it, go into it, hit choose, confirm the location. Yep. That's all right. We're going to hit okay. Ah, yep. It says there's no existing library. That's because I was trying to import it, but it's not there. So on the bottom here, we're going to do create an empty library at this new location, then hit okay. And now we've got a new library and now you'll see my name up here. So we can differentiate which library we're in. We can go back and switch them. If you click on the little drop down, now you'll see the caliber library here. And if you create multiple users, they'll just be listed one after the other down below there. Once again, we can add some books here. Sure, we'll do the same book. There we go. Now we've got it in two different libraries. Let's say I downloaded a book and I put it in the wrong library. And I'm like, oh, man, I got to go do it again. You don't have to. So we'll say this book here, the 2061. I wanted this one in my personal library. So to move that, what we would do is right click on it. And we're going to go down to copy to library and then we can choose whatever library you want in this case it's mine and we can also choose to delete it out of this library once it's moved and since i don't want it in this one it was supposed to be in mine i'll just hit jeff with delete after copy we'll do that it gets it out of this library and if we switch over to my library we will have it listed there there it is if it's just you using this then by all means just use the default library but if you wanted to divide it out and have you know each user have their own books, 
it's a nice feature to have. And for mine on my main server, I have no reason to have the other caliber library. So what I did was, well, let's just go do it real quick. We will go back into that library. We're going to move all these books. Although I don't care about the quick start guide. So let's unselect that. We're going to move these, copy to library to me, and then delete after copy. So now if we switch over to my library, they'll all be in there. And then if you want to get rid of the default one, now you can select the little carrot to drop down. We're going to go down to remove library. Then it'll show you all the libraries that you're not currently logged into. So if you're logged into the caliber one, it won't allow you to get rid of it. It won't even be listed. But since we're not in there, that's the one I want to get rid of. We'll just select that. We hit OK. Now if we go back, there's no other library. So it's all cleaned up. It's all fine and dandy getting books in here, but how do we get them onto our actual e-reader so we can, you know, read them? It's pretty simple, especially if you have a Kindle. You find the book you want, you right click on it. We'll go down to connect, share, and then we're going to email to, and then the email address that we had set up earlier, it's listed there. And you gotta do the Kindle one. It's gotta go to the Kindle account. You can select different recipients. You can email to, and then select a recipient. There's different options, but for me, it's in my library. I want it to go to my Kindles. Then I can just select that option. This account doesn't exist, so it's not going to work. But but what it'll do is it'll send it to that account. And in your personal email account, you'll get a notification that something's wanting to download to your Kindle account. You have to go into your personal email, find that message, open it up, and hit, yes, I want to allow it to do it. I think it's got like a 24-hour, maybe 48-hour time limit on it. So I typically send two or three books, whatever the case may be, whatever I need. And then go allow them through, and then that's, that's that. They just show up in the Kindle. That's the basics of Calibre. It kind of sums it up. If you'd like a video on how to integrate Calibre with Radar, let me know in the comments. And if there's enough interest, I'll put one together for you. Until then, if you found the video helpful, hit the like button and let me know. If you got some value out of this video, check out one of these videos next. And I'll see you in the next one.